With bright blue skies and sunshine like this, it's almost hard to believe that we're about to be hit by the tail end of one of the worst cyclones to hit the southern hemisphere in the last 23 years. But with Hurricane Freddy on the way, that's exactly what's about to happen. Now, this isn't actually entirely unusual. We do get these fairly frequently. But how's this going to affect us here in Bulawayo? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you all about today. Ahoy there folks and salo banani! I'm Captain Benzi, also known as the Bulawayo Buccaneer, and on this channel I like to talk about my life here in Zimbabwe and talk about this wonderful country to show you the kind of things that you don't often get to hear about this place. There's a lot of bad news, I'm here to showcase what's awesome. So, Cyclone Freddy, what's going on there? Well, first of all, what actually is a cyclone? A cyclone or a hurricane is a weather system. It forms over oceans where essentially pockets of hot air rise up suddenly over the ocean and that rising hot air sucks in more air underneath it and so on this creates a spinning vortex. Now, the wonderful thing about hurricanes or cyclones or typhoons or whatever name the particular area happens to call them, they only grow over water. This means once they do make landfall, it is only a matter of time before they eventually peter out and die. With Cyclone Freddy, this has started in the Indian Ocean, it's made its way over the Seychelles already, and it will now be moving across Mozambique, which of course is the country directly east of us here in Zimbabwe. It'll make landfall there and then begin to work its way westward towards the centre of Africa. Fortunately, it shouldn't get too far because without further water to feed it, essentially it should die by about the time it hits the Eastern Highlands Mountains. Now, what does that mean for us here? Well, here in Bulawayo, this is not a huge thing. It means that over the next couple of days, we'll probably get some pretty torrential rain, probably some quite impressive thunderstorms, and that will probably take us out of power. We will probably have several, if not just one very large, power cut. Essentially, though, what with November and December, us pretty much being off for an entire month, we're kind of used to that at this point. As for actual damage to us, very, very little. Now, that's not to make little of the situation. This is an incredibly damaging piece of weather that's headed our way. At the time of me making this video, I think seven people have already been confirmed as killed and over 12,000 people have been displaced from their homes. And obviously, that's not particularly great. However, once it hits us here in Bulawayo, there's very little left of the power in it. That's not the entire story for Zimbabwe. The Eastern Highlands should be hit pretty hard by it. A couple of years back, there was another particularly large cyclone that landed, swept its way across Mozambique, and by the time it hit the Eastern Highlands, still had enough power in it to cause severe flooding, several landslides, destroyed a lot of infrastructure and roads, and again, put a lot of people out of homes. With a country like Zimbabwe, you can never be certain of the accurate death toll of these things because a lot of deaths in these rural communities just do not go reported. With the other countries that it's hit en route though, again, things are going to be worse for them. If you're looking at Mozambique or the Seychelles or other sort of coastal places that it's hit, it's hitting with a lot more force. Again, at the time of me writing, it's currently moving with 180 kilometer winds. Just imagine a car going 180 kilometers an hour and the amount of force that that has. If you stick your head out of the window of a car moving at 180 kilometers an hour, you get an idea of the sheer speed of that wind going past. And when that wind is in large movements, it picks things up, it throws those things around and causes an awful lot of destruction. Anything that's not nailed down pretty much gets ripped up and thrown around with this, and that can obviously cause a lot of problems and a lot of damage. What can be done about this? Well, ultimately very, very little. Nothing can be done to stop it, certainly. They are purely a natural phenomena. It is absolutely accurate to say, however, that with climate change increasing, we are going to see more and more extreme weather systems like this. Those extreme weather patterns are just going to get worse. And for countries like us here in Africa, that's always going to be a problem. 
there is a saying when it comes to sort of talking about climatology and that, that essentially the countries that actually contribute the least to this are the ones that are affected the most. Like, there's no two ways about it. Obviously, Zimbabwe does have things like coal-firing power plants, but in the grand scheme of things, this country, and certainly Mozambique or the Seychelles, are not really contributing towards the global climate shift. However, they are the ones that get hit the most by it because these are the poorer countries that have less in the way of supportive infrastructure in order to actually handle that. When you go to places like, say, the US, when that was hit recently by big hurricanes, places like New York and Florida, obviously still very destructive, absolutely horrible scenes we saw from there. But there are proper relief efforts. You have rescue agencies, you have infrastructure in place to help handle that. Mozambique, despite the fact that this stuff happens fairly frequently, if not every year, then certainly every few years, it doesn't have much in the way of any way to handle this. And the folks in the Eastern Highlands that are going to be dislodged by this, the same kind of thing. There is no real infrastructure in there. I've talked in my video about healthcare in Zimbabwe, about what the rural communities are like when it comes to healthcare. So imagine those hospitals when those hospitals are now three foot underwater and half a mountain has slid them out of their foundations. Imagine when your entire community is half under rubble, half under water, and no one has anywhere to go or live. There's very little that can be done about it right now. It's a case of governments needing to step in and support. And to give the Zimbabwe government credit for this, they have usually been pretty good at getting relief efforts out to the Eastern Highlands. They certainly were a couple of years ago when there were the big problems there. Again, though, for us here in Bulawayo, it's one of those things we're not really going to have any major issues. Although I say that, I hope we're not going to have any major issues. For all I know, this cyclone might just breeze over the eastern mountains like so much kindling and just keep coming for us and we might get some really severe stuff here. But it is anticipated we will just get rather hefty rainfall, some rather impressive thunderstorms and thus probably lose power for a few hours or days. We'll have to see how that goes, and I will try to keep you folks informed of this as well. I will try and put out some shorts both here on YouTube and on TikTok, maybe showcasing what some of this weather looks like, and if anything goes particularly wrong, well, yeah, I'll try and document that as I go as well. Ultimately, though, if you're worried about me, oh, bless you, really don't be. We will be fine here. We will make a plan and do what we always do. The real concern is for the folks in the coastal communities of the Seychelles and Mozambique, and, of course, the folks in the Eastern Highlands who will bear the brunt of it before the edge, basically, is cut off the storm by the mountains themselves. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching this video. If you do want to support this channel, the easiest and cheapest way to do so is just to hit like on the videos and subscribe subscribe to see more content like this. Both of those things help me out no end, really help support the channel. But if you do have a bit of extra cash that you want to toss my way to keep me making content like this, you can do so either by heading to my PayPal and just making a donation there. I have a Patreon page where you can pledge to support with a monthly pledge. And I do now have a Redbubble merchandise store. And if I can get the gimbal to turn properly, you should be able to see there, I'm currently wearing one of my own t-shirts because yeah, that's just who I am. Anyway, folks, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to speaking to you all next time. Stay safe and see you next time.